be for summit day on Pico de Orizaba in Mexico, 5,636 meters, around about 19,000 feet. Um, so we're going to look at some of the equipment that you need to carry, what we're going to wear so that we're not too hot, not too cold, nice and comfortable, nice and lightweight because it is a fairly steep, strenuous climb. So first of all, as you can see, I'm wearing a, a base layer, an insulated base layer, both trousers and top. That'll keep me just warm enough without being too hot and it'll allow me to wick the, the moisture or the sweat, the perspiration away from my body to the outside of the layers so that when we do have a rest stop, that's not going to freeze, um, it's going to be wicked away from the body. Then add in layers step by step. I always like to add my lip silk and sunscreen to protect my lips. Uh, we're going to leave about 3 o'clock in the morning. However, once the sun gets up between 9 and 12 on the descent, uh, the sun is going to be particularly intense. The rays are going to bounce off the glacier uh, and it's very easy to get burned quickly. So always put some uh, protection on, you can wear a balaclava, a buff, or some factor 50 or complete sunblock. I also have that around my neck, attached to me, ready to go. Then the next layer is the buff, which you can use in various configurations. I generally wear it over my mouth and nose, just to keep the edge off the cold air coming in and dry it, prevent it from drying out my mouth and nose. That. That's generally enough just to prevent my mouth getting too cold, prevent my lips drying out, uh, prevent the, the moisture being dried up and getting wicked away. Uh, it also stops the air getting into my base layer and start to freeze that sweat. So then we're going to add a few more layers. Uh, I'm not going to put any additional mid layers on because we want to start off cold on the climb. Uh, it is going to be cold, it's going to be very, very cold. Uh, anywhere from zero degrees to, to minus 10, depending on the wind chill, once we start off at around about 4,900 meters. Um, but it's worthwhile starting off cold. If you start off hot, because of the, the steep incline from the outset, you're going to start to sweat and overheat and become very, very tired. And everything's going to be covered in moisture. Uh, so when you do start for rest, that's going to freeze very quickly and you'll become uncomfortable and potentially hypothermic. So. Literally, on top of these base layers, I'm just going to put a windproof layer, which is enough to block out the wind, stop this sweat from freezing, uh, and just keep me warm enough until we start generating enough body heat through the exercise. So I've got my mountain hardware, windproof trousers. With a set of braces on keep them nice and comfortable. And likewise, now the hardware jacket. And once you start off on the climb, all of your zips and vents are probably going to be fully done up to stop that cold wind getting in and Weaken away your heat. So we're going to do it up. I'm going to do up the draw cords around the waist just to trap the warm air around the core, prevent any cool air from getting in. Do up the wrists, ensure that the pit zips are fully done up, so the way I can get in there. And likewise on the trousers, if you've got any ventilation flaps or zips, ensure they're done up too. Then we're going to go for boots. I've got a, a double layered plastic boots, um, cold flak boots, serve me very well on three ascents of Orisaba. Combine those with a dual sock system, so I've got a very thin base layer to wick the moisture away uh, and to allow the foot to slide instead of generating friction. 
uh, and then I've got a nice thick merino wool sock on the outside to provide a little bit more comfort and trap the warm air between the fibres. Set of crampons, um, we don't necessarily need C3 crampons, we're not going to be doing vertical climbing, but there will be a fairly steep incline, so you've got to make sure that your crampons fit particularly well, they don't slide around, they're not loose, um, and they've got no show, no signs of wear and tear, and the last thing you want to do is have them break on the ascent or descent because of the, the steep nature of the, the terrain. So make sure you service them, check them, make sure everything's nice and tight, and they're ready to go. The crampons will go on within 200 metres of leaving the top camp at 4,900 metres. As soon as we start to gain altitude, depending on the season, depending on the weather, within about 100 to 200 metres, we'll be on the steep ice slope of the glacier, and the crampons will come in handy. We'll rope up, and then we'll start moving up the slope. A couple of other things, essentials then. Some sort of eye protection. Uh, you may want to go for glasses and goggles. I generally go for both. Um, the goggles will prevent your eyelashes from freezing, allowing you to keep your eyes open if there's high winds or a storm, or there's any ice particles being blown up in your face. They'll also protect your skin from frostbite. And then once the sun comes up and it starts bouncing off the, uh, off the slope and glaring in your eyes, you can either continue to use the goggles or you can use your alpine glasses that give you all around protection. Just make it a little bit more comfortable and protect your eyes. Then, because of the, the nature of the climb, you've got to have contact gloves. These are nice, thin contact gloves, so I've still got the dexterity, but it's taken the edge off. If I touch anything metal, my skin's not going to stick to it and freeze. That's the idea of the contact gloves. They're just a barrier between you and anything cold or potentially dangerous, like the ice axe, your carabiner, um, so as soon as you take off your mitts, you've still got that dexterity, you've still got that protection from the elements. Um, they should be nice and thin, not too thick, otherwise you lose your dexterity and you can't play with zips or open water bottles or carabiners. Then, go for a hat. You can use a balaclava instead of the combination of buff and a hat. Nice, warm hat. Then the helmet, because of the steep nature of the slope and the, uh, the firm glacier ice, any fall could potentially be dangerous, any slip, which is why we're always going to wear a helmet from top camp all the way to summit back down. So the helmet should be comfortable, not too tight, not too loose to afford protection. Fitted with a headlamp, at least for the first three to four hours you're going to be travelling up the slope in the dark. And then, because it is so cold, we're looking at some external mitts. I prefer mitts to gloves. It allows you to keep your fingers together and have contact with, it, with your digits. It allows the warm air to be trapped around your fingers. Uh, just a little bit warmer than gloves. Make sure that everything you use is attached to your body. So there should be some sort of loop, some sort of draw cord, around your wrist. So if you take off your mitts to have a little bit more dexterity to do carabiners, eat some snacks, open your pit zips, whatever you need to do, your gloves are not going to get caught in the wind, your mitts are not going to fly away or slide down the slope, which could ultimately result in the end of a climb or frostbite. So everything should be attached to the body, from the lip sill to the glasses to the mitts. There we have it, almost ready to go. Uh, I'm nice and warm now, I can actually feel the heat building up already. Uh, bear in mind, once you get out of your tent, it's going to be cold. It's going to take a while to get your crampons on, it's going to get a while, take a while to get your harness on. Organise your rope teams, sort out the logistics. Ideally, that should have been sorted out the night before, so there's not a lot of hanging around. People can get cold quickly and get frustrated. 
So everything should be prepared the night before. You should have visualized your routine and talked through your routine. So you get out of your tent, it's gonna be a little bit cold, pull up the buff, and then once you get roped up with your rope buddy and start climbing, within a few hundred meters, you're gonna feel the quads burning, you're gonna be breathing hard, and very, very soon, this layer of clothing is gonna be just right. You're not gonna to be too hot, you're not gonna to be too cold. If you do find yourself after a few hundred meters wanting a rest stop or getting too hot, then you've got the draw cords attached, you can drop off the mitts, you can open up your pit zips just to vent off. You can open up the zips on your trousers just to vent off. And this is, it's not allowing too much cold air in to cause evaporation, uh, convection. It's just allowing the body heat to escape before too much moisture builds up. Intelligent rest stops and regulation of layers and breathing and ventilation is super important to maintain that equilibrium and maintain that core body temperature so we don't get too hot. If you stood around for a little bit longer, then maybe you want to do up your pit zips or once you start climbing again and you start overheating, you can open up a little bit further or if the wind and the weather changes, then you may consider closing them even though you're ascending. So, temperature regulation is key. Then we've got additional equipment. We've got our standard alpine climbing harness. It's not a rescue harness, it's just a waist harness, not a chest setup. Um, and we're going to put that on at base camp or rather at top camp prior to getting on the glacier. As soon as we get on the glacier, we're going to rope up to our partner, to our buddy, uh, and we'll stay connected throughout the climb until we hit the summit and then back down again because of the steep nature of the slope. In addition, I generally climb with a walking pole, just gives me a little bit more stability and a little bit more balance. It can also take a little bit of the strain off the quads. And then on the other hand, I carry my walking axe, which depending on the nature of the slope can allow me a little bit more protection, can allow me a little bit more efficiency, but also if I lose my footing and slip, then quickly I can self-arrest. Again, very important to make sure the hand goes through the loop on the walking pole, so you don't let it go and it slides down the slope. And likewise, with the axe, you should have a short leash and it should be connected to your harness at all times so that should you let it go, should it fall, you're not going to lose that essential personal protective equipment. It should be attached to your body at all times. The leash should be just long enough so it's not going to trip you up, it's not going to get wrapped around your crampons and become a trip hazard, uh, but it also should be long enough to allow you to get into a good self-arrest position with your hand in that position and then you can lean onto your axe and dig it in to afford a rapid self arrest and stop your career and down the slope. If the leash is too long, it can wrap around your crampons, boots and trip you up. If it's too short, it's going to prevent you from getting into that self arrest position as quickly and efficiently as possible, which could lead to you gaining momentum and hurtling down the slope, possibly going head over heels into the cartwheel and taking your partner with you. So always check the length of your leash, make sure it clips on your harness, allowing you to get into that self-arrest position. What else are we going to take? I'm going to take some repair kit. Rather than take a roll of duct tape, which we know duct tape is fantastic for fixing everything, I've got five metres of duct tape around my walking pole and another five metres around my Nalgene bottle. I'm going to take these with me everywhere I go so I don't need the extra bulk in my rucksack or rolls and rolls of duct tape. Between the duct tape and 10 metres of paracord, that's going to allow me to effect field repairs on my rucksack, harness or crampons, should it be necessary, uh, very, very quickly and efficiently. The Nalgene ball, I generally take three. Uh, one is for as a pee bottle at night, so if I do decide to use Diamox uh, or I've drank a lot the night before to maintain good hydration status, rather than getting up and down throughout the night and going outside 
uh, interrupt my sleep pattern or get potentially cold and wet, I keep one of these in the tent specifically for urination. Um, and then on the summit bid, we'll take two of these, so I've got at least two litres of water, and in one of them, I'll put some oral rehydration salts just to keep that balance of water and electrolytes and potentially prevent any cramps. Also good to have some snacks, and uh, whilst it's a fairly short summit climb in terms of metres from the top camp to the summit, it, it is arduous, and then it's equally arduous, it requires a lot of concentration and quad power on the way down, uh, and that's just to get to top camp. Once we're at top camp, we'll have lunch, um, and then we've got to pack up all the gear and go all the way back down to Piedra Grande, to the stone refuge again. So it's a long, long summit day. So you want to have some easily accessible, easily digested, high energy foods for the way up and on the way down. Uh, gels are great, just because they're easy to swallow, they don't freeze. Taking things like Snickers and Mars bars, unless they're next to your body heat, they tend to become frozen very quickly. Uh, you can break a tooth or simply they're just too hard to chew and, and digest those calories. So uh, you might want to go for energy gels, energy blocks, something soft and palatable with a lot of sugar and carbohydrates, potentially electrolytes. So, in a nutshell, that's about it. I would obviously have my rucksack as well with a feather down jacket, uh, a good warm jacket. So once we get to the summit, and we're going to stop to enjoy the views, take pictures and have some, uh, have some food. I'm not going to get too cold. So quickly, take off the outer layer, take off the outer shell, put a nice feather down jacket on, zip up the layers again, uh, and then we can sit, rehydrate, get some calories on board, take some pictures, uh, remembering to stay roped up, remembering to keep your ice axe to hand at all times. Uh, I would also take a first aid kit, but we'll talk a little bit more about first aid kits in the next video. Okay, thanks very much. Any questions or any feedback, any other suggestions, please feel free to find them in through the social media or on email. Uh, I look forward to hearing about your stories from your next client. Stay safe.